Now let us explore the case theme, movement and motion. Children are always moving. The objects selected for this theme can help all engage with the questions of how do things move and how do things work. Each theme has four cases within the theme. They have slightly different objects in them, but all are a variation of the same theme. Let's get moving. Let us take a close look at movement and motion case number two together. Notice how we are handling the objects. When you explore the objects, please mimic our gentleness and intention. Here are some object handling tips. Before lifting an object from the case, take a second to look at it and notice where the strongest part of the object is located. That usually means that you'll be lifting with two hands with one supporting the bottom of the object. If you think an object is too fragile for your students to engage with, you can also hold on to the object and encourage your students to use a two finger touch. Now let's look at an object from the movement and motion case. The object I'll be pulling out today is an owl mechanical bank. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No. Is it an actual bank, do you think? Yes, but I heard that, but I heard that it's supposed to call it a piggy bank. Why is it not a pig? It's not a pig because they decided to make it an owl, like an owl bank. I have a piggy bank at home. That's this a is, piggy. Yes, this is very close to the piggy bank that you have at home. So this was used to be able to collect money and save funds. It was a way to encourage people to save responsibly. So you would put your coin in this little slot. Oh, it moves. Just like that. Like an owl moves its head. And then you can get all of your money and your coins from here. Would you like to touch? Yes. Can you do a two finger touch? Yeah. That would be great. One of the owl. Nice so, job. Be gentle. So when holding these objects, you want to make sure that you're being look. gentle. Look, it actually has log symbols. Yeah. Excellent. It looks like logs on the side. Great observation, Grace. Today's object is the Brownock device. Grace, have you ever seen anything like this before? No, what's a Brownock device? Do you have any guesses on what it might be used for? Um, to count numbers. To count numbers? What makes you think that? Because there's a lot of numbers on there. There's a lot of numbers on there, that's right. Would you like to hold it? Yes. And then maybe you can get a closer look on what you think it's used for. Nice job. Why does this have numbers and the pointy thing that I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Seven eight. for your age. So you're moving that piece, right? There's movement going on. What do you think? Why is that piece mm -hmm. movable? Mm -hmm. To count numbers. To count numbers. So can I show you a little bit more about the device? What? What? It says right, arch, length. Yeah, can I show you? So this Brannock device was created in the 20th century in upstate New York, and this is actually to measure your foot. So this device was used and is still commonly used today to measure the size of your foot. And this piece here that moves Allow someone to set the measurement on your exact foot length. You'll note here that it says here right toe length and left toe length. So that's what the Brannock device is used for.